Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela. I am Angela Thomas-Smith. I am the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. I am also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine, where my whole desire is to bridge the gap between brown authors all over this world and to touch on topics that's affecting our brown community that people don't want to talk about. So I've taken this opportunity to share with you guys some amazing individuals that are doing some amazing things within their community around the world that's touching lives and impacting lives, just trying to educate, empower, and encourage other people to walk in their purpose. So I've truly, truly enjoyed these last two weeks. I'm excited for this week. We're kicking off this week. Um, had an amazing guest on an hour ago, Kathy Muhammad, um, stopped by and shared with us. Um, so now I have an amazing woman of God, um, have had opportunity to um, share with her throughout um, the domestic violence takeover here on the platform, had an opportunity to get to know her a little bit. She um, participated in an anthology with me as well. Um, just an amazing woman of God, um, amazing entrepreneur. Um, she has a lot going on that I hope she's going to share with you guys across the board, um, everything that she has going on. So I'm going to move out the way and allow her to come forth so she can share with you guys. And her name is Dr. April Johnson. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sister Angela. I appreciate you so much. You How have been you? a blessing to the to the body of Christ. And again, we do send our condolences to you and your family. And just want to tell you that, you know, there is a blessing in your pressing. And I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So today, um, I definitely want to take this opportunity to sh for you to share with um, those that are tuned in and those that will tune in um, just a little bit about Dr. Um, April um, Johnson. Um, I want to know everything about you. Um, we want to know about your business. We want to know about your ministry. We want to know about your books. We want to know everything it is to know about you and how we can support you in what you're doing, um, how we can follow you, um, all those great things. So I'm going to move out the way and I'm going to give you the floor. Well, thank you so much. And um, don't give me the floor. I want you to stay right there with me because, um, you know, God has blessed us to be together as a team and also as a, um, a body of Christ. We are here to be about God's people. And when we are about God's people, that's how we are successful. And in that success comes from the heart of God's heart. Just like David, he says that he is, he became the man after God's own heart. And I believe that when we stay with God's heartbeat, that's where we get to know who he is not because of ourselves. Um, I'm just a servant of God. I'm just like Paul. He says that he was a bond servant of God. And when we look at the bond servant of God, then we look at it from the standpoint that we are his vessel and we are designed for him and his glory. Amen. So Dr. April Johnson Enterprises, um, it compri com comprises of um, business as well as personal and spiritual. I am a doctor in Christian counseling and um, have Johnson C Counseling Center, Enrichment Center that is specializes in marriage, individual, life coaching, and business coaching. Additionally, um, that also entails helping those with um, credit repair and starting business formation is under the um, Dr. Johnson Enterprises. Um, we also help people to get established in the um, in taxes and to um, if they want to start their own tax service business or be a part of um, a company. In addition, 
We also help with um, publishing and um, writing, even as a ghost writer. I'm also an author of Dr. Um, April Johnson Enterprises with his My Joy is Power and My Joy Travels the World. It's a series in addition to Anthropology, which I was a co-writer, a collaborative writer with um, evangelist um, Angela Thomas. Our book just came out. It's Healing in the City in Heels, um, which has been doing very phenomenal. That is also available. And I am working on two, uh, two more books. So today, I just want to give you a word. That prayer, Sister um, um, Evangelist Angela asked me to encourage the people today. One thing I want to say is prayer. Prayer changes everything. When you get mad, pray. When you get frustrated, pray. Amen. When you don't know what to do, pray. Prayer is the communication between you and God that when you don't know what to do, you are able to pray. You can communicate with God and he will speak with you. He's always there for you. He's always listening. He's always um, a step away when we can't get the answer through. He will understand you. He will motivate you to be the best person that you would ever design. Even when there's times that you don't want to pray, pray anyhow. Because that is the key to my success. Because if I didn't touch in the mind of Christ, when times when I wanted to give up, didn't understand it, and this past week, I spoke on with St. I'm also a pastor, senior pastor of St. Mary's Treeville Baptist Church in 410 Hunter Street, Plant City, Florida. And the Lord began to tell us about Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And talking about the dry bones, the very dry bones. And the thing that stood out was God presented this and brought Ezekiel and set him in a valley. Yes, set him. So that means he was set in the place. And how many of us know that God is setting us up for victory? He didn't take us to a valley to leave us. He set us in the valley of very dry bones, not just dry bones. Dry bones would have been fine but very dry bones. And that represented that he was there with us. And there was three key points I want you to know when you're in the valley experience. The valley experience can feel lonely, feel frustrating, feel, you can feel disconnected, you can feel isolated, um, but there's a purpose of those valley experiences. God could have given the same message, which we want to see and hear on the mountaintop, right? We have mountaintop experiences, but God has specific instructions in the valley. And it reminds me of the scripture where it says what? Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Why are you not fearing in the valley? Because God is with you. The valley experience is not to destroy you. It's to build you, to develop you, and to also build your stamina. Because in order to understand and appreciate the mountaintop, you have to go through the valley. And when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, Jesus is what? The lily of the valley. So he's right there. He's our bright and morning star. Amen. So I wanted another thing in the valley is he set you just like Jesus. He came after 42 generation and at the set time he arrived. So when God's deliverance is coming to you, it's at the set time. So your valley experience is set. Your deliverance is set. Your mountainous experience is set. 
So the very thing that you're going through, God is not caught by surprise. It's not a happenstance. It's not what it could have should have. It's Lord, look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He is in charge. And when you understand that God is in charge, that's how you can endure the mountainous experience as well as the valley experience. Amen. Because it was in the valley that I found out he loved me. It was in the valley that I developed my own self-love because I had to be like David. Right. Encourage your own self in the Lord. There was no one there but God in the valley, God in the bills, God in sickness, God in death. Amen. When my mom passed um, in 2007 and I never felt lonely in my life until that moment. The reality of after burying her, it was almost a month after date. It was almost my birthday. I felt like an orphan. And. I was in a deep valley because my mom was just, she was my heartbeat. Children could not console me. Family could not console me. But when you go through a series of death, my, on, on January 1st, actually it was January 2nd when I got the news, my grandmother on my father's side had passed. My uncle, my favorite uncle that I'm named after, April for Andrew, and my mother. I learned three deaths in one day. One day. Now, if you couldn't tell me that the devil wanted to take me out, he wanted to take me out. And it doesn't matter how saved I was. A, I was licensed, ordained. I was a pastor. I was preaching the gospel. But you couldn't tell me that why that question, why, Lord, how could this be? And you can't be in three places at, at all the time. My uncle couldn't have a funeral because by the time they found him, he was already there for two weeks. My grandmother, she had passed and they had the funeral on the same day as my mother. I can't be in two places at one time. So you have to make those choices. So I was in the valley first morning these deaths. And during this COVID situation, we, we, we say it's COVID, but you have to realize there is a time and a season that we're all going to have to die. But we, we want to get to heaven, but we don't want to die. You know, the process of it, right? So the valley experience gets us through the process of life. There's some dark places in the valley. There are some places that you would have never even ex could express how dark the valley is. Now, you're in the valley. Now, God is going to reveal more death because bone says it doesn't say how they died. Doesn't say, was it suicide? Was it natural death? Was these bones from, um, you know, murder? What, what? It doesn't say how they died, but you see the evidence of death when you see bones. Amen. So God does not want us to focus on the death and the bones. Okay. But I want you to focus on those bones mean promises. Just like Joseph, he told them, commanded them, basically, I will haunt you down if you don't bring my bones back to the promised land. Moses, what did he do? Never met Joseph, but guess what he did? He went and picked up those bones before they left Egypt because Joseph believed in a promise. Hallelujah. You got to believe in the promises of God. That even with death around you, those bones represent promises that God is going to fulfill. And maybe you're the person that God is going to use you. You didn't know why you had to see death, why you had to see these bones and why you have to go through these experience. But God is choosing a remnant of people, of leaders, of women and men that love God regardless of the situation. Ezekiel had to have a love for God that he was willing to follow him because it says the spirit of the Lord led him to this place. Amen. So 
in that valley experience, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to understand that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you even in the valley, in the midst of death. And the Lord, the third thing the Lord told me to say is speak life into your circumstances. Speak life into your situation. Speak life into your relationships. Speak life into your ministry. I was ministering to everybody else, building everybody's ministry up, encouraging them, prophesying, doing everything. But guess who I left lacking? Myself. Where everybody was leaving full and happy and joy. And I'm saying, Lord, nobody speaks into my life. Nobody calls me with the prophecy. No one calls and says, you know, God laid you on my heart and I have to just give this burning word to you. You know what the Lord said? The same words that I give to them, you speak life over your own circumstances. You speak life over your own situation. Because guess what? Sometimes people give you a word and their word is salted and peppered with jealousy, animosity, resentment. So they're not going to give you a pure word. That's why God says what in Ecclesiastics, that the apothecary has dead flies in it, in their oil. So don't look for someone always to do what? Give you a word of God, give you a message, give you something that you can actually get for yourself. God is saying to us, speak life into your ministry, speak life into your business, speak life. If no one is a customer, you buy your product, you put your product online. If you know that your product is good, then you sell it for outside of your family and friends. Because if you believe that God has blessed you in heavenly places, I'm going to tell you, people that didn't know me, People believed in my ministry more than people that I, I thought that would support me. And God said, change your expectation. Because what you give, may it may not come, the way that you're going to receive may not come from the people that you give. And you have to be willing to say, Lord, any way you bless me, I will be satisfied. Anyway, God, I love you regardless. Freely I give, freely I receive. And so in that valley experience, as the Lord commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to those bones, Ezekiel didn't question God. Ezekiel didn't say, well, God, how these bones don't have ears. These bones, they do have ears. They have spiritual ears. Ezekiel didn't say, how is this possible? He was obedient. In order, you have to be obedient to eat the what? The good of the land. So you have to trust God when you don't trace him. Trust him when it don't make any sense. Hallelujah. That's how I've gotten where I am. It doesn't make sense to leave a job that is paying salary to work for commission. It doesn't make sense to leave a salary job and you have to start your business and you have to build your clientele and you have this and you have bills. But you know what? It's not my bills. It's not my business. It's not my vision. It's not my dream. It belongs to God. When you say, Lord, this is yours. You gave it to me. I give it back to you. And so it's up to God. One of my godfathers said to me, he said, when I wrote my book, he's like, well, that's good. Now we just got to, um, now you just got to make it successful. I says, no, I don't. He goes, what do you mean? I says, no, I don't have to make it anything. Because guess what? God gave me the vision. I was obedient. I typed it up. I wrote it. I sent it to the publisher. It's finished. It's successful already because I was obedient. Now it's up to God to make it success. Amen. Just like he says, promotion doesn't come what from the east, the west, the north and the south, but it comes from where comes from God. So when you put promotion up to God, guess what? You just trust him that he's going to work it out. It doesn't always feel good. It always doesn't look good. It always doesn't even hear or sound good, but know that 
all things work out, even death, even life. Amen. It all works out for your good. When you don't know how to get the answer, pray about it. Don't you know that to start, you know, I, I, I started three times in my life. I stopped my job, start the, the Christian counseling, did it again, went back into insurance, started my counseling. The third time, this time, amen, I was like, Lord, are you sure? I did it two other times. But you know it, it reminds me of strike it again. Amen. Keep going. Keep going. Just like he said to the prophet, right? The king. He said, keep, he says, you should have hit it again. Then the Lord would have what? Conquered all of your enemies. You should have kept on hitting those arrows. Don't stop. And the Lord began to show me, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when you do it unto me, it's going to be successful. It's going to work because your motive is different. My motive this time is, and, and, and I had a five-year plan. So the Lord told me five years, you need 2015. He says, okay, you need to get out of debt. Plus you have to sow. Plus you're going to start a ministry. Plus you got to raise your son. But you got to save and you got to pay, get out of debt. Had a five-year plan. Do you know the fifth year was June? A situation happened and the Lord took me off my job in July. My plan was finished in June. Paid off bills, consolidate was done in June. I didn't know that God was going to take me out in July, but God knew. So when he told me, you have a choice to keep hitting this wall with people that are not treating you right and appreciating you and your stress level is going up, you're having anxiety, you know, clients that, you know, treat you and um, are causing you stress because you're a different persuasion and, and for other reasons. But I tell you what, when you sacrifice and you say, God, Oh my God. Hallelujah. See, my job was a sacrifice. It might not be a sacrifice to you because I loved my job. I was trained. I could do my job in my sleep. That's how um, proficient I became. Amen. And I was rewarded for my excellence in my job. But when God tells you, is your job worth you? Is your job worth your mental capacity? Here I am counseling, right? I'm a doctor in Christian counseling. I'm helping people. I'm developing. But the Lord is saying, but your capacity, you're just as important as the people that you are ministering to. God wants us to know that we are not robots. We are not machines. And this thing of proving that we are, our faith is so high and our faith, you know, put more faith on it. Guess what? Some situations, some valley experiences that I have gone through personally shook the very foundation of my faith. So you, it's not about you fast, fasting and praying more. It's about you receiving rest. Sometimes it's not, it's not the devil. It's that you're overworked, you're tired, and you haven't given God his opportunity to refresh you. So when you're going through these valid experiences, you got to look at it as a blessing as well. You know why? Because that's your season of rest. They can't find you in the valley. They can't locate you. And God sometimes will hide you in the pavilion. Hallelujah. Give him praise that he will hide you in the secret place of the most high God. So it's not that people are not reaching out to you and your business is not. Sometimes God wants to put you to a side. Didn't he say that he set us apart? You are set apart for God's good grace and his good measure. 
And we all have to just be obedient and receive the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. I was muted. I had to mute myself because I'd be over here talking. Wow. Why did you talk? <laughs> <laughs> because I people Hallelujah. know, like everybody that follow me, like I, I, I'll get into this conversation and I'll take over the show. Take over. I don't be show. wanting to do this because <laughs> I, I, I be wanting people to be able to connect with my 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 guests. Um, We're connected come on that. <laughs> and share and be a part of what's going on. I want people to be able to say, okay, let me, how can I go follow them? Oh, they got this going on. This too. <laughs> oh yeah. I need to go check them out. That's, that's what I wanted. Cause I'm saying you over here, like you over here, you are all in my conversation. <laughs> you are all in the last interview. What? And then these comments over here, just like, <laughs> <laughs> they they just come. what's the comments i can't see <laughs> you're muted glory <laughs> we can't hear you sweetie just confirmations hallelujah Wonderful. thank you i know i'm 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 look I have my um, picture here and I'm just praising the Lord too. I guess it want to praise the Lord with me. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm just, yeah. yeah. Amen. It, 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 yes. She's saying, yes. A mighty word. Thank you. Amen. This is, this is, this is what I talk about across my platform. So this is it. I mean, people just really need to understand. <laughs> like you've been on point. How can they follow you? Um, actually, um, the best way is of course Dr. April Johnson on Facebook. I do have my own um website, draprilljohnson.com, and um Instagram, which I'm getting better at. I I have to get some a little bit of help because I just is dr underscore aj4 and um I do post there. And, and one other thing I just wanted to share with, with, with um, your audience and just encourage that, um, you know, there's going to be some times that it, it looks as though everything that God has told you and shared with you is contrary. And I want to share something. When you you know it's not a, just a good idea and a vision is when you're attacked, okay? Satan attacks visions and dreams. He doesn't attack a good idea. He doesn't attack, oh, that's just a business plan. But he will attack the plans that God has set for you, amen? Mm -hmm. Because he knows that there's a promise. He knows there's a prophecy out there, okay? And one thing about it is when Moses was born, right, there was a prophecy that there is a even the prophecy from false prophets and good prophets. Amen. When God shows a sign. Amen. That's why we have to remember gifts is without caught without repentance. God gave many people gifts of seers, of diviners, right? We call them diviners, right? But that doesn't mean that they don't see it. It's just the source that is giving them and empowering them. See, when God gives us a gift, we present it back to God. Amen. And that creates our the purity of the gift. But trust me, there's people that have natural gifts of seeing into your future, but they don't want to, they're not being channeled by God. They're being channeled by the devil. They're being used by the devil. And that's why they block and stop because they get a glimpse. They don't see in whole. Remember, we only see dimly. But there's going to time we're going to see in whole. Amen. But when I want to encourage you that people do get a glimpse of your value, they do get a glimpse of who God has placed in you and they connect with you. But mm -hmm. instead of them trying to help you, they hinder you. They get jealous of you because God has allowed 
people to see. Amen. Just like King Herod, what happened? He knew there was a sign. There was a prophetic word. And what did he do? He tried to kill anyone two years less. He can't clue in on who it is. They just have a sign. They have a clue. And see, God will protect you in the midst of the storm. That's why we say no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It doesn't say that it's not going to be formed. It doesn't say that the hammer is not going to be formed. It doesn't say that the knife is not going to be formed. It's not going to say that they can't speak over you, right? Reputation, when people speak a bad word and say things, that's a weapon. How many times someone said something? That's the darts, the fiery darts of the evil one. Amen. So when people, they send their weapons, God did not say they were not going to form. He said they weren't going to prosper. I'm telling Amen. you. See, Praise I've been God. sharing this across. <laughs> and and, and Miss Billy, I'm sure Praise she know heard me say Hallelujah. this. But I've been sharing this same word she was just saying. I, 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 and, and I, I'm not a, a, a theologian. I, I, I don't know how to quote all the scriptures, but I know a little bit. And I be telling people, <laughs> I be telling them. I, I, I told him. I said he, he told me no weapons formed against me shall prosper. Amen. He said they gonna, they gonna form. Amen. I have Amen. the power that that's on the inside of me. Him. Amen. They not gonna prosper. He Amen. Said, and, and and these tongues gonna rise. That's right. But through your action, through you keep working, through you keep doing what he's called you to do, through you keep walking in purpose, through you keep doing what he's purposed you to do. Amen. Amen. They 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 will be condemned. They, they have no choice but be condemned. Amen. So you just all in the house. You in the house. Right. It's just confirmation. I'm just like, you just all, I'm just, I'm just sitting over here like, yeah. Oh, glory. And you know, that's the thing that, um, and we try to stop it from. And another thing is the Lord showed me several years ago. He says, don't chase a lie. So I don't chase a lie. I don't chase my reputation because Jesus came that he would not be created a reputation. But the Lord says, you, your reputation will be put in the wind. Your name will be put in the wind. Glory be to God. So when I get these opportunities and I do appreciate you, you know, allowing this opportunity and even, you know, praying with the collaboration because I don't collaborate with just anything and everything because just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean that you are serving my Lord. It doesn't mean that your intentions are pure. Amen. So you have to realize that God is saying to us that this is a time and season that to be co-laborers. Yeah. Watch who you co-labor with. But you have to also understand that when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God in due season, he will raise you up. Amen. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will do it. Won't he do it? I swear, I've been saying, won't he do it? And yes, he will. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will do it. He will do it. I'm telling you, I'm Amen. a witness to that. And Amen. I sit and I'm just listening to, <clears throat> I was just listening to you. Um, I experienced that valley in 2017. I lost six family members in one month. Three of them to suicide. Wow. So I know what this journey with, with, with death has been like because Amen. I've been on this journey since 89, even as, as a tender child. Yes. You know, I, as a teenager, I experienced my first major loss um, 12 days after my 16th birthday, losing my mom. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. And it's been it's been every year after that. I've lost someone close to me in my family. Some years it's been two, three people. Some years it's been four. Some years I hadn't been able to count them. But right. every year I've lost somebody. So death has been my journey. It's for me to understand. But I'm glad, you know, I, I made a post today. <clears throat> I posted the, the transformation of a butterfly because I have to share this. I hadn't shared it Amen. with nobody yet. Hallelujah. I, I, I really hadn't shared it with nobody yet because this thing is still fresh on me and it just dropped in my spirit. Like, but it's on me and I can't let it go. But I was supposed to release this book, Soul for Metamorphosis. Um, it's a poetry and short story book some months ago. <laughs> Not knowing that I was going to experience the loss of my cousin, my best friend, my big brother. And this thing hit my soul. It touched my heart. It shook me. 
And God dropped in my spirit this poem. <laughs> it's called Pain to Purpose. And he brought down to me that word pain. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what that word meant to me. Not to nobody else, but Amen. what it meant to me. I, I want to share that. I want to share that really quick. Amen. And then I'm going to get out of here. But this poem, he said, when he dropped it in my spirit, the P was to push. <laughs> to push past everything to understand the bigger picture. It hurt when I first heard that you were no longer here physically, but now that you were my God and angel. The A is for angel, my angel. The memories we made, good and bad, will never fade. Your calmness and your non-bothered personality kept me calm. As I type, I'm remembered of your many trips to the park and how people always thinking we were, couple, we, were, we were a couple or siblings. We always joked about how much each one of us favored my cousin, my aunt Gloria. You're her twin. Illuminating light. My illuminating light. Every memory that we've ever created has been running through my head these last 24 hours. I've laughed, I've cried, I've gotten angry, and I apologized. I came to realize it was your turn to be my illuminating light. Now my brother can rest. Thank you for being everything that you were in my life. My heart is hurting for your physical presence, Amen. But I know that you are forever here because you will always be in my heart. Your spirit and your energy will never die. Amen. We will meet again. Amen. The end. Now what? Amen. I first ask you to forgive me for not wanting to let you go. God's purpose for you in this realm was over. It was time for your next journey. As much as it hurt in the natural my spirit man as well, because I know that you're traveling on and you will never leave me. So I release you so that I can begin to heal. Thank you for being more than my first cousin. Thank you for being my big brother when I needed a push. Thank you for being my best friend, for always telling me like it was and never sugarcoating it. The pain of today will become memories of yesterday. Velvet Jones, man, I'm going to miss you. Travel on. God dropped that yeah. in my spirit when dealing with the loss of my cousin. He Amen. broke down that word pain. And when he broke it down to me, it was push. It was angel. Illuminating light. And now what? Because when we lose people, we, we wonder now what? Uh -huh. We we go through the pain, we hurt, we we, we but it's not about us. His journey is over. Right. And I come to realize that, you know, on this journey called life, we're only here for a short time. I keep telling people we're we're on borrowed time. Everything Amen. is borrowed. None of this belongs to us, but we right. have to take advantage of it while we can. Right. We have to take advantage of the things that he placed in our life to utilize Amen. them to be the best version of him that we can be in the physical. So right. that when we, when we leave this physical body, that we can travel on right. so that we can stand before him. And he say, well done, my good and faithful sir. Absolutely. And if I can, what, what I was hearing even, um, so even as we are talking about domestic violence, right? Um, there's pain from even divorce, you know, sometimes um, separation, sometimes you feel the same in a death of relationship, friendship, best friends, misunderstandings, things that even God has separated us from, right? 
um, someone that is not in your corner, but it hurts because this was your physical friend, you know, and I just want to encourage your listeners, encourage you. And the thing that the Lord, um, we have to pray and we're going to pray before you go, because the Lord, we can get used to pain. Okay. Pain has a purpose to let us know something's not right. Pain is not supposed to be our every day. Every day, we're not supposed to feel pain in our bodies. That means something's not right, right? So a pain in our life is a signal to get closer to God, to realize that we need God like never before. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want you to get comfortable because this is the thing. And I believe this is very prophetic. Even with Ezekiel, when the bones represent death in the valley, God told him to speak life. And even when our physical family leaves, God is going to bring us spiritual family, sisters and brothers. And he's going to heal us from the natural pain. Just like you said at the end, which was so beautiful. I know I don't have you in the natural but I have you in the spiritual. Amen. And, but God is going to reconnect. This is a season of restoration that this is, even though our physical pain that we go through, God has purposed that for us to draw closer to him and to draw in the power of God to get us over this pain. And death should not be sitting at our door. But death is a passageway into life. Amen. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to begin to pray. Amen. And the Lord began to tell me, don't accept death in your life. I expect life. Amen. We can get so used to poverty. We can get so used to death. We can so get so used to not having that it becomes a part of our life. But God says, speak those things as though they are. And he said he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is within us. When you look at pain, I remember there was a time I expected to go into the valley. I expected to dwell in the valley. But the Lord says, no, you are not any longer a cave dweller. You are no longer. The valley is going through the shadow of death. And the Lord says, don't camp there. Don't stay there, but prophesy while you're there. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over that relationship. Prophesy over your family. Prophesy over your ministry that you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. What was designed for someone else, they didn't make it, but God, you made it. But by God, you made it. Amen. So when you realize that God's hand is upon you, Amen. You don't have to accept the seeds of Egypt and the diseases of Egypt. But the Lord began to say, you speak life. You put the blood posts, put the blood on the blood posts of your heart, your mind, your spirit, your home, your children. That you expect them to live. You expect the legacy. Hallelujah. And what some killed someone else, God is saying, I haven't designed that for you. That is not your light. That, that is not your portion. Praise God. But you got to believe that God has greater. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. And God is bringing you out. He says that you have been tossed and toiled. You have been shaken, you have been broken, you have been crushed, but now is time for your oil to flow. He says, God is telling us his oil wants to flow through the pureness of what we've gone through. And don't allow the pains of this life to cause us resentment and to cause us to step back. Don't step back from what God has told you to do. And the enemy does this to create fear and also anxiety in our spirit. 
But I come to declare today that God is God. God is Elohim. Hallelujah. He's God all by himself. Hallelujah. He doesn't need anybody. Yes, his name is Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace. Even in the midst of the storm, God is the God of peace. And that's why we have to keep our minds stayed on Christ. What was designed for someone else's destruction, God's going to use those bricks. Hallelujah. The same bricks. Amen. Hallelujah. The same bricks that the Jews and the straw that the Jews created to build. Hallelujah. It was going, it was destroying them. But guess what? When God said enough is enough, let my people go. Those Egyptians couldn't wait to bless the children of Israel. That when they left, they left with blessings. They left with more than what they came in. And God is saying, you're going to leave with more. Those that are listening today, you're going to leave with more than what the enemy puts you through. Double for your trouble. I promise you, if you hold on and believe in God, I know for a fact that by me giving up what I thought was prestigious, I was vice president, I was somebody, I was running a financial center, but guess what? When God closes that door, no man can open. And God closed it for my benefit. Hallelujah. He closed it for my opportunity to be with you today, to be with the kingdom of God. I'm in full-time ministry with not worries of bills and things because God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. All sufficiency. So the things that you lost, the Lord told me, he says, um, the things that you've lost, God is going to give you double. He's going to give you triple. Let me tell you, last year, I was happy about my little book sales and all that I had did for the, but, and all my money went to the church. It went all to the church because I was working. This year in July, August, J September, sorry, September, I started taking from my book sales and from my counseling. Why do you think God took it 500% than what I did in two months last year, a whole year last year, God did it in one month and doubled it 500% than what he did last year. Right now I'm at 1200%, 1200, 1200% of what I did in a whole year, did it in three months because God says, because you gave up, what you wanted, your agenda, what you thought was important. And you put me on your agenda. You put me as priority. Even today, I expected you to cancel. I expected you to say, well, I just came from a funeral. But I said, Lord, if she's not going to give up, I'm not going to give up. If she's going to press on, I'm going to press on. Praise God. If she's going to encourage the people, I'm going to encourage her. Because guess what? You need me and I need you. We are part of God's family. And when you hurt and I don't feel that hurt, there is something wrong. But God says, let the devil be a lie. And he's the father of lies. Because let me tell you, I felt you even before. Before you even said it. We don't know what we're going through, but what did I reach out to you and say, I support you. I don't know what you're going through, but I believe in you. I know you got all these followers. I know you have everybody, but God said, your voice, hallelujah, makes the difference. Your text will make the difference. Your picture of encouragement will make the difference. We all matter, hallelujah. And when we do our part, God is able and more abundantly, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is within us. But God is getting ready to do a magnanimous work and God is taking us to places that we would never have thought. And God is getting ready to open the floodgates of the blessings. The Lord kept saying, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And I've been praying for five years. Okay, Lord. Help me to tap in. 
because I'm righteous. I'm walking in your integrity. I'm walking. And as soon as I began to be a banker, let me tell you, everything in my household was contrary to saving, building credit, building finances, building job. But I persevered. Doesn't matter what it looks like. I know at the end, I'm going to have a wealthy place in my life, territory that I and houses I did not build. Come on now. We got to believe what God has said to us. Do you believe the report of the Lord? Do you even believe the prophecy that comes out of your mouth to other people? Yes, I do. Because if God did it for one, he's going to do it for me because I'm his righteous. I'm his remnant. I'm his apple of his eye. And I know that God loves me. I may not love myself. People may not love me, but guess what? I know God loves me because why? The Bible tells me so. And he tells me, he teaches me, he walks, me. he loves me a enough to say, I need you off that job so that you can be about my business. I need you off that physical man's job so I can spend some time with you. That I can heal you and I can refresh you. I was in so much pain in July. I was having so much panic attacks because I was, it was a threat from a client an inherent threat, they want to say. But it, and then they came back a year later and showed me the damage they did to my car. Don't you know that's a mental capacity? But you know what? I was like, Lord, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. The Lord said, no, you're not. You couldn't sleep for a year. You couldn't eat for a year. You could not do and function effectively. See, we can function, we can do it, we can we can go through the motions, but the Lord wants us to be effective. See, right now, you want to be effective, but right now you've been broken. From 1989 to now, God is saying, I'm going to turn you into, you're in a cocoon, I'm going to turn you into a butterfly. But guess what? When you turn to a butterfly, you got to shed all this pain. You got to shed all this hurt. You got to shed all the resentment, the anger, the, the miscommunication, the abuse, everything. God wants you to shed it. That when you get to be a butterfly, your wings are light. Your way is easy. And you bring light to the world. Just like Jesus. But what happens is... We want to take some of the stuff, the residue from our cocoon experience. But God says, no. He says what? He's making us a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things are brand new. See, God wants us to walk in the pastor poem. I'll never forget him. He did my forward in my last book. And he was a pastor in Delaware. And now he's in Maryland. He said, the Lord used him to prophesy to me. I was going through a divorce. It was so traumatic. I was in my ministry and I was like at the fork of my life. And he said, one day you feel the pain of ministry, but God is going to allow you to enjoy ministry. Didn't understand what that meant. How do you enjoy ministry? Ministry is pain. Ministry is suffering. Ministry is going through tragedy and stuff. But no, there was a season and God brought to my mind and had me read David. There was a season in his life. Yes, in the first part, he was warring. But at the end of his life, it was peace. See, God will get you to peace because you have to realize there is a thing called peace in the valley. But you have to let go of all the pain, all the turmoil. And God's going to continue to walk you through, to heal you. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We only have a few more minutes, but Lord, we're going to take this time to just say thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity, God. Lord, first of all, we just want to lift up the burden for our sister Angela, God. Lift her heart up, God. Allow her to know not to grow weary in well-doing. And she will faint not. And she will receive the reward that you have set forth for her, God. 
Lord, we come against the spirit of regrets, oh God, the spirit of what could have, should have, would have, oh God. Lord, the pain of the past, oh God. Lord, we ask that you continue to break the follow ground. Allow her to humble herself, God, under the fortitude of you, oh God. Not in a forceful manner, but because you love her, God, and you have an everlasting love for her. Lord, all of her followers, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, that you had the opportunity to just encourage them as well that the valley experience is not to kill us or to break us but it's to make us so when we get to the mountain we will be humble of spirit oh god and lord we thank you for the richness of your glory the power of the holy spirit your healing power because you're jehovah rapha and we'll forever give you the praise ever give you the glory always give you the honor in jesus name amen 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 Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I definitely um, <clears throat> want to thank you for stopping by and sharing with us on today. Um, before we leave, um, we have to share um, how they can follow you um, again so that they can connect with you, um, Dr. April. Yes, I am on. Thank you so much. I'm on Facebook, Dr. April Johnson. Um, also, my page is Dr. April Johnson Enterprises and St. Mary's Free Will Baptist Church. It's in Plant City, 410 Hunter Street. And you can always reach me by my telephone number, 813 813- Five four five nine two one eight. We offer counseling. We offer life coaching, business coaching, tax preparation, business formation, and we're also on Instagram, dr underscore aj four. And we're looking to be connected and to work together in the God's kingdom. Amen. 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 Well, I definitely want to thank you for stopping by again and sharing with us. Um, I definitely will talk to you a little later on. You be blessed. Amen. Thank you again. And you have a blessed day. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you guys for stopping by again and sharing with us. I tell you, I was truly blessed um, from this conversation on today. I hope you guys were blessed. I hope there was a nugget that you could take away from this. Um, Please support Dr. April um, Johnson. You can follow her on Facebook. You can reach out to her um, via her telephone number or via her website. I tell you, I'm sure, I'm sure there's something you can take away. Again, I have been blessed. I hope you have been blessed. I want you guys to know that I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Um, Stay tuned. Um, We'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Love you guys. Be blessed.